out text to Dylan, getting everybody in line for class. Welcome. Let's do a little, uh, little uh, warm up here. Uh, one shoulder forward, next shoulder forward, shoulder forward, shoulder forward, shoulder forward, shoulder forward, shoulder forward kind of rolling the shoulder a little forward. So it's kind of rounded, rolling. Feet parallel, knees bent. Careful not to draw your weight forward here. Good job, nobody moved. Very nice. Good. Rolling the shoulder forward. Trying to get that shoulder to be felt all the way to the spine, not just kind of the arm. And kind of stretching through the shoulder blade to the spine, the erector spinae muscles. And then back the other way, roll, roll. I see frog, you're having a little trouble rolling your shoulders, maybe still just after that tadpole stage, you don't quite have developed shoulders. That's okay. Good. Shoulders. This is a nice bear practice. So I see the three bears in class and perhaps the pan bears are doing this pretty naturally. Apparently my uh, phone is, uh, <laughs> that's funny. So the, uh, the phone apparently heard me say bear and was telling me something about the Chicago Bears schedule. <laughs> so maybe Texadilla was just checking to see when the uh, Dallas Cowboys were going to be beating the Chicago Bears. Good. Now I'm going to bend the elbows as I do this. So roll and then bend the elbow. Roll and then bend the elbow so my hand passes the heart. Roll, bend the elbow, roll. Bend the elbow, roll, bend the elbow. And then letting the hips turn without the knees moving. And so just coordinating the rounding roll with the turning hip, reaching to the spine through the shoulder blade, and then rapidly bending the elbow. So that I kind of Trace the heart and the collarbone or the mala as opposed to keeping the elbow straighter and whacking myself in the face. Go ahead and then coordinate it forward, thumbs towards the center line, pinkies towards the line you're, the direction you're facing. So piercing with the fingers, sinking the tailbone, not shifting the weight forward. I have my jacket and hat on in here because there's no heat on. And it's in the 40s Fahrenheit. That way the heater's fan doesn't interfere with the audio that you guys may be getting. Good. And I'm going to start to squeeze here once I pierce, squeeze, and pull back. So trying to relax the pecs and then energize the chest when I pull back. So you got a pulsing in the chest. Good. Just padding the sides. Straightening the legs as they come up. And pipe it on. Good job, Snoopy. Well done. I see you learned this from Seafood Given. Yeah, very nice. He's got his tabi on for class, so a little uh, Japanese martial stylist, I think. Good. And then 
loosen up and so shift lift so I'm shifted to my left leg lifting my knee off to my left side somewhere depending on my flexibility opening it turning it so I'm endeavoring to open here without straining the knee that I'm balanced on open quite far again without straining my knee and then square myself again <clears throat> this is a nice one to do with some weight bearing or holding a tool and I want to kind of feel this warming the kidneys using that so as working the abductors and adductors as we go certainly warming up the hips careful here not to reach so far that I tighten the buttocks and careful not to lift so high or fast that I lose my balance So we would learn this uh, with a, a tool. Uh, such as this. So a staff, or in this case a spear. And <clears throat> when I come up and turn, and then turn back, we can see how my spear points sort of to the camera. And then here, so it's uh, in the same plane as my chest at this point. And as I turn, the staff turns, it turns again, turn, turn, and then square, which is fine. That helps me recognize how much rotation is going on. And as a teacher, I can look around at the students and see how much rotation they have. But actually what I prefer to do is endeavor to keep the upper body square so I get a little bit more stretching twist through the sides of the body, maybe the intercostals, the mid-back, so that I have this other level of attention to endeavor to keep the square and yet still have all this rotation and if I'm going too fast you can certainly slow it down I noticed all the fuzzies here have entirely slowed it down looks like Maria is asleep over there maybe she will uh, pick her head up just a little bit and immediately into either abdominal crunches or shavasana depending on how she's doing. So you could certainly do this slower, but you could also do this with a bar, like a railing, <clears throat> where you're fixed to the thing and you have a little grip. So you can't get those arms moving and the body can move differently in relation to them. Good. Okay, so let's go uh, a little padding down to the legs now. Since we've just worked those, woken them up, down the outside, rub up the inside. Uh, nice kung fu there, Beaver. Beaver's one of the natural talents in this kung fu class. He's there with his Canadian family, uh, the baby beaver and the moose. Just like Sensei Better Sauls has a moose up on the Kamadala behind me. I think I only got one more of these before my hat falls off. There, good. 
a sip of water, a uh, tea, I can say a tea. Oh, good job. <clears throat> so let's do a little uh, circuit of the tiger block because I feel like that's what you're mouthing to me. I got a tiger here in the front row. And uh, I see the other <coughs> kung fu animals here too, so maybe we'll get to something for most of you. Uh, I'm not quite sure what the alpaca llama from Suteri is going to teach us. Maybe you're more here for the Tai Chi class, uh, but I'm open to whatever you have. The Tai Chi class is waiting over here on the side. The, the uh, sloths and turtle, they're here waiting for the slower class, so they're uh, very quiet over here waiting for class. Um, so let's go uh, do a little circuit of tiger block. <coughs> There's the circle. <coughs> and the circle is more or less face and stomach. So face, stomach-ish. That might be a little smaller, a little bit bigger. And it covers about the width of my chest. And I'm looking for a circle so I can preserve speed and preserve the ability to break for when I want it. And of course we'll do that the other side. And we have the fingers splayed, the finger pads reaching a bit, palm hollow, there's our tiger. And so as I come across here, I wanna have the other one start its path like so. And of course, this could be done the other direction as well. So I have left hand traveling outside and then repeating outside or right hand traveling outside and then repeating outside. The hand that falls always falls on the inside. And once we have this pattern, of course, we'd like to do it with a little more ferocity. And I see the tiger's woken up now, uh, right here in the front row. And um, when we're doing the circuit of tiger block, what we're quite interested in is that the hands never end up on the same part of the circle. So here, I just did a slow-mo of what might have been happening fast for somebody, and then if that's what's happening, that's where I'm open from over here. So I want to have these kind of uh, polar coordinates in relation to one another so that I'm always a half circle away from any given point at most uh, in terms of um, deflecting, catching, grabbing, attacking, and so forth, intercepting, we might just say. So when people start to speed up, I don't know if I can do it wrong, <laughs> when people start to speed up, they often kind of have that, right? So looking good, looking good, looking good, and then they kind of caught up and maybe sort of fix it at the end. And what I'm interested in is that at any point, if we pause it, we're gonna find our hands on two sides of a circle as we go. And of course I wanna have the hips turn with this. This can be done stepping and shifting and so forth, but nobody here looks like they're much for stepping drills. Maybe they all just had a big lunch. Nobody seems particularly mobile. Uh, matter of fact, when I think of it, I don't see them using their hands or claws or wings all that much either. So I'm going to stick to standing version, but I think you can certainly imagine an entering practice, a retreating practice, an offline stepping practice and so forth. So that's a little circular tiger just for fun. I'm gonna do a version with a leopard paw. So here's a leopard paw. So I have uh, myself bent at the second knuckles and I have the large knuckles um, uh, unactive so that the, uh, the plane of the back of the hand extends to that second knuckle. There's no bend in those largest knuckles. Some people will hyperextend a little bit there, so they'll have that extension, and I don't want that either. I just want this neutral line. 
and then the thumb is curled in like so <clears throat> and this is much the same practice as we just did circular tiger which is largely horizontal uh, uh, vertical in the plane and the circular tiger was vertical and this leopard strike series is horizontal and because it's horizontal it's going to generally feel a little bit easier for people to coordinate their hips their back the turning of the body to drive power but again i have much the same kind of uh, idea here that i can be checking intercepting striking grabbing raking uh, a series of things the same thing i could be missing missing and then finally catching and then hitting something like that but the idea is to offer a flurry so i don't just have like one shot one shot which is great if it works i'm offering this flurry so here i'm just having a slide off line since we're not doing stepping so that I have a sense of something coming and me uh, challenging that with an intercepting movement as I move my body out of the way and then I look for targets or perhaps looking for more things to intercept. Notice that I'm not leaning, I'm not tightening the shoulders, I'm still using my hips so my hips can be turning away my hips can be turning toward my hips can be staying fairly neutral and in this case i have the body weight driven by the pushing in the legs um, so kind of doing those as a strike series but it's kind of nice to do them as a a bit of a warm-up as well so let's do uh I don't see any snakes here, so let's uh, go through a little uh, Iron Buddha and see if I can uh, use my slippers just as a marker. <clears throat> so feet parallel, about shoulder width apart, feet straight ahead, parallel with each other. So the stance is going to be to step forward and then back, and then the other side, forward, and then back. Forward, back, forward, back. And when I go forward, I'll try and do this uh, angle for you here, diagonal. So when I step and shift, it shouldn't peel my foot up, and it shouldn't unsquare my foot. So then when I go back down, my feet aren't parallel. So I'm trying to use the uh, the slippers as a mark so that you can clearly see on camera where I was is where I return. So I step is not a very long step, but the diagonal line that I can draw through my heels is 45 degrees. And here, of course, is 180 and 45. So that's the stepping and we're going to squat every time we come back to this horse stance position here, here, squat. And of course you can squat an awful lot more. I don't know how much I should squat while I'm standing on slippers, not in slippers. I don't know, it kind of feels like I might do a split here and then uh, I'll get laughed at by the peanut gallery, I think. Well, I have to say during this social distancing quarantine period in the life of the world, it's really nice to have a big full class meeting in person. It's been a long time since I got to have that level of camaraderie and enthusiasm and challenge. And plus my class is like really quiet. Nobody's giving me any lip or interrupting with great questions. 
Good. So squat here. So when I squat, I also want to make sure that I don't needlessly lean forward, that I think about dropping my tailbone and my knees not jumping out to uh, be above my toes or further than that. That's not healthy. So dropping the tailbone without just needlessly leaning forward. You may have to do some lean and that's okay. If I go slow, I guess I can squat a little. <clears throat> and making sure that, I don't know if I finished saying it, when I do the squat, my heel doesn't come up. Good. So punch, step, squat position, punch, squat, step, return to the same position, squat, punch, step, step, squat, punch, step. It's important to make sure that this punch is a punch once you get coordinated with it, you don't simply just lower your hands and you certainly don't reach your hands so they kind of extrude your posture out of your stance. So I'm squatting and punching here. Good, here, squatting and punching and coming back to this chamber position. This style, we do it fairly high chamber. I know a lot of people have done other martial arts and they have a low chamber, but I'd like to have a high chamber here. Also, a lot of people do these kind of arts and they have lazy chamber. So something like this, kind of lazy. And I'll go to the same side. And then also something like this, pretty lazy. So my elbows out, my wrist hasn't traveled back. So when I do my chamber, I want to make sure that my forearms are pointing the same direction as my feet, not pointing in. I don't think most people will go out, but I want them fairly parallel. But in doing that, which kind of opens my chest a bit, I want to make sure that I don't needlessly accept tension um, and uh, arising and or arising in the shoulders. You might get both, I guess. So I want to make sure that I don't just pull them back and make my breath shallow, make my knees straighten, uh, make my shoulders tighten and perhaps raise. Uh, I'm interested in forearms parallel with the feet, relaxed shoulders, open chest. That doesn't mean the most open chest ever. It's not like being in the Marines and throwing your shoulders back at attention. It's drawing the wrists back to open the heart space. Okay, next step. I think it's starting to warm me up. Yeah, I am starting to slip out. Thank you. Piglet and Pooh up here in the front row just pointed out that my feet were off, but uh, Piglet looks like she's just uh, resting in Pooh's lap anyway, so I'm not sure how, uh, how, how, uh, I should take her advice, but I will say it's always good to take advice if it's good advice. It doesn't even matter if the person giving the advice isn't uh, demonstrating the advice. Uh, what's important is that if you get good advice and you recognize it and it be, can become installed in your system, that's in fact what allows you to realize they weren't demonstrating the good advice. And that's fine, you still got what you could get. Maybe you can then share it, teach it, model it for others. So in this case, Piglet doesn't have great stance, but she did point out my not great stance, and I'm going to accept that, even though hers isn't so good. And maybe a day will come where I can return the favor and help her, um, but I think she might be napping now. So, next element. Here, when we step forward, the right foot in this case stepped. I'm going to punch. There's a vertical punch, a thrust punch with the right hand. So, my wrist is neutral. My wrist doesn't have this internal or external deviation. It doesn't have this extension or flexion. It's neutral. So punch, chamber, step, punch. Once we add this punch, this becomes where people want to step a little further because they think forward, aggression, damage, strike, this is the cool part, and they overstep. And that's often going to peel the rear heel up, often rotate the rear, rear 
heel inward, and which leaves me with a lousy stance, not to mention no good power delivery on the strike itself. <clears throat> so remembering what we started with, it's not all that far of a step. Punch. <coughs> Good, here, looking forward when we punch down. So this is Tito Hanshin Chuan. This is uh, what's called the Iron Buddha exercise, number one. And it's part of a form that has a couple different Iron Buddha exercises in it. But this is a nice cardio exercise, nice stance exercise. And I use it to teach an awful lot, kind of philosophically about the art that I teach. <clears throat> Good. Good job, Panda family. Good job, Yatra Das. Yatra Das is the monkey over there in the corner. He's the <clears throat> servant of the trek. We're all on a journey, and that character on the calligraphy behind us means way or path or journey. And Yatradas is the servant of that journey. So, next element here, I just did that punch oddly because I was slipping. <coughs> here, last element, next element. When we punch, we're making contact with the heel of the palm to the forearm. And this is gonna be much easier for me to do now because I have been challenged during this teaching just to teach one little piece at a time and not do the whole thing. So I now feel a whole lot more free to just do it. Good, I think I'm losing the shoes, I think you've been seeing them enough. So now. So I'm gonna make a different contact each time as I do this. I could have done that time, you know, strike one, strike three, strike five, strike seven, or whatever, and the even numbers being here, I guess. Um, and I can also vary that a little bit. The ulnar side, the radial side. So it might look a little bit more like that as we go. I don't want to actually develop a bruise anywhere. But I do, if you're able, I do like to see people hitting this fairly hard to simulate contact and the imposition of will despite contact. You know, you think you're going to block me. Here's my punch anyway. And of course, um, trying to maximize the flow of circulating energies in the arm, which is getting worked here. So normally 50 is the count, and you can make that 50, 25 per side. You can make that 50, you know, 50 per side, if you like, but, and then of course, this should, is normally done as a cardio practice where you knock out 50 like that, and probably my breathing has changed. Okay, thank you all very much. Give you guys a moment of on camera here. There we go. There's Fern and the ape. There's Piglet and Pooh. There's Bob, there's a tiger, front row panda family, and coach class panda. There's Mr. Yatradas, and the shoulderless frog, 
Snoopy for C for given. Ah, sorry about that. And there's our Canadian family. And there's our Sufu Terry, Sue Terry's. And there's Mimi and Barely Bear. There's Maria. And then our special assistant instructor, Texadillo. And our waiting Tai Chi class. Thank you all very much.